Today, we are trying an old Anglo-Saxon recipe for a syrup that is gonna help hydrate you. And it's simple enough that you can probably literally follow along at home. Stay tuned. So as we are in the dead of summer, it's very hot, almost too hot for me to go outside in my garb and try to film anything for an extended period of time. Very sad, but this has led to an interesting discovery. Given that it is very hot, I wanted to know exactly how it was that medieval people kept cool, and I found this whole article about the varying ways that they used linen, not just by wearing it, in order to keep cool, and that will be linked down below. But in that article, I found a very intriguing, very short recipe for something that we kind of have today. If you are familiar with the sort of modern crystallized hydration packets, you just open them up and add them to water and it's supposed to you know, help you refuel, get more electrolytes, I think that is how this was used. Now, this is an old Anglo-Saxon text called Bard's Leech Book, and it's based off of an old Latin source called the Physica Pliny. Uh, I didn't take Latin in high school, one of my biggest regrets, so excuse my pronunciation. Um, but so, and we will see in the ingredients that this really reflects its Latin or Roman influence. So the recipe is very simple, and it reads as follows. Take a vinegar one part. Of honey, well cleansed, two parts. Of water, the fourth part. Then seethe down to the third or fourth part of the liquid, and skim the foam and the refuse off continually, until the mixture be fully sodden. Now, I am no historical text analysis expert, but I do know how to read, and I can use Google. So what this really seems like is we are essentially making a simple syrup. There are no actual measurements, so we can pretty much make whatever quantity we want so long as we keep the ratios correct. So, for example, we can use one part, one cup vinegar, two parts, two cups honey, and then one part, one cup water. We add those all together and then we seethe, simmer, boil it down until it is roughly three quarters of the amount of water. Uh, liquid that we started with. So if you have all of those four and say we used cups, you would have four cups of liquid, you'd boil that down until you had three cups of liquid, and then you'd be done. And what we're gonna end up with is a very thick syrup. And that I suppose is what they describe as fully sodden. Very good. But we are supposed to skim uh, foam off the top. Now, it says well cleansed honey, and it says that there will be foam when we boil. I don't think that's going to happen because I am using pasteurized honey from a modern bottle, not a honeycomb. Maybe that is something I'll try in the future, but I have a feeling there's going to be very little skimming involved. And so we see the Latin influence here. I remember watching a Metatron video from 2019, and then I think he actually talked about it in a really old video from like five or six years ago that um, in the Roman period, what they would do is they would just put vinegar in their water. And that sounds really odd to us now, but it was considered a really refreshing drink back then. And you know, maybe it's an acquired taste, but I have been doing that since I watched those videos. I have, I literally have this tiny little glass vial that I would just fill with apple cider vinegar and I would take with me and I would put a portion of it into my water bottle when I was at dance rehearsal for a play or something like that in the hopes that it would keep me energized and keep me hydrated. And I didn't really run any scientific tests on it, but it certainly didn't hurt. Now, I would be very careful with uh, drinking vinegar because if you drink too much of it too quickly and in too strong of a quantity, it definitely can upset your stomach. I've had that happen to me. So be very careful with that. Let me also say that I am no doctor. I'm not making a scientific claim, but I am saying that the idea of adding vinegar to water in an attempt to cleanse it of any microorganisms. I'm not saying that this is the same as an iodine tablet. I'm not saying that this is the same as boiling. I'm not saying you won't get sick if you put vinegar in your water. But I am saying that just on the surface level, it's probably better to put vinegar in water if you're going to drink it from an unknown source than it would be to not put a vinegar in the water, if that makes sense. So also listed in the article, if you don't happen to have honey in quantities that um, are necessary to have two parts to one part vinegar and one part water, uh, then at the bottom of the article, linked down below again, there is a second, uh, more modern take, which I believe is pronounced Sekanjabin. Again, pr forgive the pronunciation, I believe it's Persian, something like that. Uh, and the only real difference is that instead of using honey, they use sugar and they add mint to it as well. And again, I, this says it's supposed to be diluted 
in water, which is why I'm going to do that to the Anglo-Saxon one, even though it doesn't say to do that, because I have a feeling when we're done, it's going to be very thick. So let's get right to it. So if we look upon the very medieval internet, we will see that the definition for seethe is to bubble as a result of being boiled, and that the definition of sodden is to be saturated with liquid, especially water. Wow, so that was actually really interesting. I was incorrect in my hypothesis that we wouldn't see any foamage. We did. I don't know if that is the foamage that they were talking about. I don't know if that's what they saw, but um, we, did, we did see foamage, and I did skim as much of it off as I could with my spoon. And you can, you can, you can see that here that it's actually rather noticeably different from just the regular bubbles from boiling. And when I did a little bit of a taste test, um, it didn't taste awful, but I don't think it's how you would want a drink to taste. It, it was very sort of tangy, maybe almost burnt. And I'm also thinking that maybe if that's the impurities sort of coming up to the surface, uh, the less of that there is, right? The purer the mixture is, the longer it will keep. So that's my second hypothesis. Maybe that one's also wrong. And the other really interesting th thing that happened was as I continued to skim off this foam, eventually what happened was like, look at this. It really looks like seething to me. Like, if anything was seething, right, this would be it. And it looks noticeably different from when it was boiling just a, sec a few seconds ago. I'm so glad I had the camera rolling when this happened. You can literally, like, what did I do? What did I do differently? What happened? What is this? It's seething. I'm, I'm seething. This is excellent. This is excellent. We literally just discovered something on this channel. We did it. We did it. I'm very proud. I'm very proud of this moment. I mean, I don't know what else to describe it. That's seething as far as I'm concerned. So we let that seethe for maybe a couple extra minutes. I've just taken it off the stove. I'm going to let it cool down a little bit. And uh, we, we can see here that it has a much more syrupy consistency. Is that what they meant by sodden? I would say probably, um, unless I did the entire thing wrong, but it's not like two lines of information is very much to go on. I also just think it's so ironic and in that sense a little medieval, right? That uh, in order to make a drink that's supposed to cool you down, first you have to stand in front of a fire in the middle of summer. I just think that's really funny. All right, so that wasn't too bad. It didn't take that long. It actually took a couple of hours, but that's only because I'm filming this, and when you do this, you probably won't be filming it all the time, so it shouldn't take you more than 30 minutes to get everything set up. Um, so I have the mixture here in this glass. I'm going to try it just by itself, and then I have it diluted in water, and I also, just for, just for kicks, uh, have it diluted in a little bit of rum as well. Now, I don't think that that's how they would have drunk it, um, because I don't think they had rum back then. But given that we understand that this is essentially a simple syrup with a little bit of vinegar in it, I figured, you know, if it has multiple uses, uh, why not try that out and then share it with you guys. I'm going to go ahead and try just the mixture by itself first. Cheers. Ooh, it's got a little bit of kick at the end there. Wow, that's really good. It tastes just like honey the second it hits your tongue, and then, you know, right as you're swallowing it, then you get just the, the tiniest little bit of vinegar. Um, 
I don't know for a fact that they want you to dilute it in water, aside from that there are other recipes that do want you to do that. Um, I would not drink this like this um, if I had the choice, uh, because it's, 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 it's quite syrupy. It's just like drinking maple syrup. Now I'm not going to lie and say that I haven't done that, um, but I'm also not going to lie and say that that would be what I would do if I were searching for hydration, which is the whole point here. Um, so let's go ahead and try it diluted in water next. Very mild. I mean, of course, you could add however much you want to taste. Um, I would probably put a little bit more, but that's... It's drinkable. <laughs> You barely even notice the vinegar or anything. There's no, there's no burn or anything. It's just slightly different than drinking regular water. I'm trying to think if it reminds me of anything else, and it doesn't really. So, unless you've had apple cider vinegar and water before, kind of just need to try it. And it's so simple. But let's go ahead and try it in the rum too, just, just because. Ooh, ooh, drinking on the channel? Yes, of course. Well, it's definitely much sweeter. This is crack and rum, so it's it's generally pretty sweet uh, anyway, but this is, you know, it's good. It's good. That probably wouldn't be great if you were looking for hydration either. That is definitely a more sort of warming, wintry drink. But wait, actually, this is just coming upon me. What if we take the rum with the mixture in it and put it into the water? 18th century alert. This is essentially grog now with a little bit of added honey and cider vinegar. Theoretically for health purposes. Let's try this. We can see the much darker amber color. This is why we used the uh, the modern beer glass because I wanted you guys to be able to see uh, what this looks like. Very very pretty color. Um, it honestly doesn't taste that much different, but that'll give you a little bit of that'll give you a little bit of the buzz if you happen to be in a situation where uh, partying is on the table. Just be careful if you're trying to set this up so that you can hydrate about just going and chugging a couple shots worth of rum in your water and thinking that's going to be all right. Maybe it will be for you, but uh, probably wouldn't be the smartest idea for me. Although, I don't know. I mean, there's plenty of cultures that water down their alcohol. I mean, I mean, we have grog right here, 18th century uh, sailors, and we have the Romans watering down their wine. So I don't, I don't know. This bear is experimenting. This bear is experimenting. Me going camping? drinking rum in the woods who knows who knows so as we approach 1000 subscribers for the channel which is is a milestone for us you know um in fact by the time this gets posted we might have already surpassed that i'm thinking that i'll do uh, a live stream just a quick sort of hangout a uh, couple minutes and 20 minutes maybe something like that uh if people show up which I very much hope you do. We can just hang out, I'll answer your guys' questions. It doesn't have to be uh, channel or medieval related. It can just be stuff about me if you're curious. We can just do a little Q&A. Uh, you can bring your drink, we can just drink together and hang out for a little bit. Look forward to uh, announcements about when I'm planning on that happening uh, in the coming days. There'll be a community post or something like that. And I really hope to see you there. All right, so that's it for the video today. Thank you for coming along. As we literally were able to see in real time what I think they meant when they said see we witnessed seething, but now you have the answer. If you were looking for a period correct, I mean, ingredients pending, obviously. They didn't have pasteurized honey. They might not have had apple apple cider vinegar. They might have used a different type of vinegar. But if you, all of that aside, if you were looking for a more period correct uh, way of hydrating yourself, whether you are just out camping or hiking or at a fair or a LARP, uh, then um, this is at least one answer uh, that I can provide for you. Very simple recipe, 
Uh, so I hope you enjoy. And if you do try it, go ahead and leave a comment below what you thought of it. And if there's anything you did differently, if there's anything else you added, because now that I have this as a base, um, I, will I will definitely be tinkering with it to see what else I can add um, to give myself a couple more um, health properties. We're going we're to experiment with this, but I do hope you enjoyed, and I want to wish you very good luck on your adventures.